But, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to my tutorial for Terra Beginner Any Percent, Earth by Sleep. I've been wanting to make a tutorial for this game for a while, and Terra Beginner makes a lot of sense to me, because A, it's one I'm very familiar with, and B, most beginners are like, most new runners are going to want to pick up a beginner category instead of the crit categories that tend to be more popular. And I think Terra is a great place for new runners to start. There are a lot of interesting strats going on. It's a very fun route casually. There's not a lot to learn, but a lot for you to try to master to go fast. So, for all those reasons, I'm going to try to show this off to you. So the baseline is I'm not going to explain the basic basic mechanics of this game. I'm assuming you know how commands work. I'm assuming you know about them leveling up and mel melding and how all that basically works. I'm assuming you know that item drops are that item drops are random, both melding materials and otherwise. I'm assuming you know about dealings leveling up through random drops when you have a D-Link activated. And with that in mind, we're going to get started. In the Birth by Sleep community, we don't start the timer until character select instead of difficulty select, because we saw no reason to time this 23 second intro every time. So when we when we select Terra, we're immediately going to be dropped into what a lot of people call the worst fight in the game, which is orbs. Uh, speedrun wise, are not necessarily wrong. So you skip one cutscene going into that, and now we have these fuckers. So the thing about orbs is that these things tend to run around wildly. And you can lose a lot of time to them just being assholes. So it's all about trying to stop them from doing that, and trying to hit one orb into another with a finisher or a command, because that way they just instantly break. So I'm going to show you how I try to do that. So at the start, I dodge roll up and to my right to get this orb. And I do... Ideally, he just sticks around and I can do a 1-2-3 finisher and kill it. One thing you're going to notice here is I never do two air hits in a row on an orb unless I know it will kill. I will do one and then one, two. Sometimes it just screws with you anyway, but how it's supposed to work is they are n they're only supposed to fly away when you do two air hits in a row or you do a finisher. Sometimes, if you do two air hits and they happen to be fairly close together, then it just flies away anyway like it did there. So, this next wave kind of depends on where you are. If I'm near them, I'll usually try to do two air hits on one and pray one of them knocks into another. When I'm not, I just shot lock. The shot lock is pretty powerful against these things. Okay, last wave is the most consistent and most annoying at the same time. So you see two orbs right in front of me towards the end of the room. Every time we're going to want to go over there, pray the party members stay away, and we're going to want the quick blitz. Ideally, those two will hit into each other. This time Aqua screwed with me and hit one away, but we still got two to hit together. If uh, Either party member screws you, that could usually happen. The party mem party members are completely random, so they can just screw you whenever they want, but they usually go to orbs closer to them as opposed to going anywhere for them. Sometimes they can finish the fa fast really the fight really quickly for you, most of the time they can't. You'll see I built up my command meter and got a finisher there. This finisher kills an orb in one hit on beginner, so that's all I'm doing. 
then the one one two combos there. There's only one left, so I shot lock it, and that's the fight. When there's only one left, only you will be able to kill it. So you have one tutorial message there, one cutscene here, and now I'm going to talk a tiny bit about cutscene skips. Cutscene skips in this game are completely consistent for the most part. You'll notice when I skip this, there's going to be a little heart in the bottom right. As soon as that disappears, plus start, and you can skip it. That's true with every cutscene in this game. So press X to skip that thing. And then we have these help menus. The help menus, if you press X, you're going to go through each phase like this. What you want to do is press O. You press O, it just closes it. That's only relevant for that help menu, after orbs and all the cutscenes, and one other help menu when we first open the menu, which I will point out. So, Enchanted Domain is the only world. We're going to head over there. Make sure to press X to go quickly on your glider. Skip a cutscene and we're in Force Fight. This Force Fight is probably the second highest reset point in the run besides orbs. Because it's completely RNG if we're going to get what we want, and how quickly we're going to get it. Because at the start, we're going to pop in the Venn D link and quick blitz this guy. Then we're going to just start comboing all these floods. What we are looking for is for one of these guys to drop a level up for Ben. If the floods don't do it, you go over here, strike rate these guys, and keep doing it. And just pray you get it. If you don't, use the finisher on this guy. And there it finally is. If you don't get it after that, you quick you do a strike raid uh, on those two scrappers, the green guys. And uh, you keep going. I the best possible luck you get this level up the first ever the first blood you fight, but but it's completely random. Sometimes you'll get it the last guy, sometimes you get it the first guy, sometimes you won't get it. If you don't get it at all, most people end up resetting. If you don't want to reset, you can just kill Floods before Aurora's bedchamber. And uh, pray you get it quickly. Anyway, once you do this, you hover over it, it takes a second for you to pick it up, and you revert. After you revert, you're going to spam, spam your three abilities until your command meter goes up, so you can get in critical impacts, and then critical impacts going to wreck these. This final wave, focus on the floods so they can't run away, and then once you have the finisher, do it. The sooner you get, the sooner you get the Ven D Link upgrade, the sooner you can go into critical impacts and wreck worlds. So where we need to go is right there. I'm going to show you a chest over here. If you head back here, there is a pulsing chest. This has a pulsing crystal in it. I, you can get it if you're afraid of not getting the drop. You need two pulsings in the run. There's one pulsing chest that's a lot easier to get. So I generally don't recommend getting that. So then you go up here, you get this blizzard chest. That is not an optional one. But I wanted to show the pulsing chest unless, in case you were curious or um, happy. Or I wanted to play it really safe your first couple runs. So this room, you go to far to the right, you open the zero gravity chest. Then you slide up here and you slide and dash. When you sliding dash into an enemy like this, you can immediately dodge again. That is a bit of movement tech we want to use as often as we can. It is very helpful, lets us move very quickly. And um, I will be using it a lot more. So you go to Aurora's bedchamber, you skip a couple cutscenes, master that. Move out, look to your right, sliding dash through some more enemies, immediately dash out of it. 
And now we're on to the first boss fight. So, um, you cannot skip this because the information screen is up there. You have to watch this opening. So, this fight on beginner is very consistent. It, the only piece of RNG is in the second phase, so I'm going to show you how to do this consistently. When I unpause this, I'm going to step forward and summon Ventus' D-Link. When I do this, that means he is always going to do the attack pattern where he swings wildly at me. That is what you want to happen, and all you're going to do is start attacking him. Start attacking him, use your finisher, your mashing X at this point. He will fall down after the second finisher, just keep mashing, he will get up and retaliate with this black mark like so. When he, he will hit you, that is fine. When he's done doing it, you slide back over, you attack him a bit, and then he's going to do this. This is his desperation move for his DM. He's going to charge wildly at you until he hits you or a certain amount of time passes. We want to try to be in front of him like that and get hit, and then sliding dash into him so he can start attacking again. And after he does that, he's going to do one of two patterns. He's either going to swing wildly at you like this, or he's going to jump up in the air. Usually, this pattern is a lot faster than the jumping pattern. The jumping pattern, when he jumps, you just kind of meet him in the air and keep attacking. But either way, the fight's pretty quick. It's slightly faster like this. He shouldn't DM again. And that is why we get Ventus' D-Link, and why you need it for the rest of the run. Because that's not the only boss we use it for, and it allows you to attack really quickly, which is really, really helpful. So now we have Castle of Dreams and Dwarf Woodlands to choose from. We're going to Castle of Dreams first, but first, we open up the menu we're going to hit Command Dex. The first time you open Command Dex, the Help menu will pop up. You press O. That is the last time you need to worry about pressing O. Although, I've gotten used to mashing text in this game with the O button. So, you edit your deck. You're going to replace this Quick Blitz with Zero Gravity and the Empty with Blizzard. When you're in these menus, there are a couple one thing you should know is if you press R1 like this, or L1 like this, it will flip you back and forth a few spaces on the commands. So when I'm at the top, I just hit R1 to get to the bottom, and then go up and down like that. Also, when you're in the menu, if you press Start, it instantly closes. That's a way to try to do the menus a little bit faster. Okay, Castle of Dreams Force fight. You see more floods? Uh, this is more RNG bullshit. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go into Aqua's D-Link this time, and we're going to pray for a drop. Hit this guy a couple of times, blizzard him, go over here, thunder a guy if you can. We got it very quickly, which is good. If you don't get the D-Link, you just keep going around like I just did, hitting people, blizzarding, thundering, using the finisher until you do. If you don't get it at all, you don't need the reset. It's not nearly as important as the Ventus one, but it is going to change at least one strat later. I will point that out in Dwarf Woodlands. So you get it, pick it up. When you scroll down three from the base, you will get Magnera. You are going to be using this a lot. I am literally, literally when I open the D-Link, I hit R2 three times. Then you are on top of Magnera, and then it will scroll up the Fire Strike, then you scroll down two for Thunder. That is the quickest way to use those D-Links. And this magnera Thundera combo, you're using for the rest of this fight, and you're going to be seeing it a lot in the run throughout. Usually with the finisher as well, because the finisher is very powerful. Just keep doing that, and that's the fight.
So, the only thing to talk about here is movement. You've already noticed that I'm dashing everywhere by pressing square. Um, I don't mash these out, I time them. So like, when one ends, I start another one. So I'm going right over here. This is the pulsing chest I talked about earlier that you can get much quicker than the other one. I highly recommend getting this starting out. You will probably eventually get to a point you want to skip it, and that's fair. But that's really up to you. Usually if I have one pulsing drop before this, I skip this chest. So then you quickly go over to the side, you jump, it'll load into the cutscene, and we're at Cinderella Escorts. So Cinderella Escort is a pain, but to me it's the least painful of the Escorts in this game. So basically how this works is if enemies are in front or around Cinderella, she will stand perfectly still and not move. If there is space for her to move and you are in front in front of her, she will usually run. And that is what you want her to do. She will walk if there's space in front of her, but there's an enemy as well. Our goal is to try to keep the area clear and keep her running for as much of the fight as possible. So at the start I'm going to dash forward in magnet to try to get try to get these floods to not I'm sorry, magnet, zero gravity, to uh, not attack her. Then I'm going to stun edge one of them and normal hit the rest of them. This should put you in critical impact when this uh, when this guy spawn. So I go up, line it up like this so the finisher will hit the big guy. And I just start bashing. If you did it right, and when you look forward, you'll be able to kill two of those guys before you get the finisher. I could not, which is fine. Just do the finisher anyway. But if you, d but when I do this, two boots will spawn. If you could kill two guys before, before the finisher shows up, the finisher will kill the boots. If not, you have to scroll up, use the zero gravity and then light up sliding dashes so you can get back into critical impact quickly. A flood is being a pain, but what are you going to do? So these guys, you just smash about a bit. He's being a real pain today. Zero gravity the boots, because they can become invincible, and it sucks. And just tr try to clean up from there. This one flood is being a real pain today, and escorts are going to be slow as a result, but that's still the basic premise of what you're doing. So this room, I'm going to step to the left and then shot lock one of these guys to kill him. I believe 7 kills most people do to full shot lock. Then sliding dash to get back over, zero gravity, stun edge, and then hit. That should get you into critical impact. And then start wrecking people. And pray they don't slow you down too much, and Cindy can start moving like that. Once they're all dead, dash forward. You use the impact finisher on these guys most of the time. If you have it on these guys, use it. If not, zero gravity. Sliding dash. I'm going to use the stun edge to make sure I get in critical impact. Then you're going to go to the right and kill these boots. Ideally, she's going to follow. Yes, she is. Then you go to the top, kill, a c kill some boots, focus on the floods before they get away, wreck some stuff, and the finisher will kill the rest of the wave. And that's Cinderella Escorts. If you're really lucky, Cinderella is capable of just running past at everything and anything. But it's very rare. You can basically be as fast or as slow as she wants you to. So here, movement. Dive forward twice, jump, slide, dash. And head to this door. Then we're just going to do some nice, easy movement over here. 
sliding dash to the right corner of the room, pick up this chest, and go fight Music Maestro. Music Maestro is annoying, but not particularly hard. Going to dash forward, vent his D-Link, lock on, pray it doesn't do that. If it locks on to a different instrument, press L1. That is why this fight is annoying, because uh, the instruments can get in the way and hit you, and or they can, and or you can accidentally lock on to them. There's not a lot you can do. When you hit him one, once with a finisher, he'll keel over. When you hit him twice, he'll come back and hit you like this. You can just block it. And then you're going to attack him, pray you have a chance to finish him before he j jumps, because that's possible. It's very rare, hasn't happened often. He jumps, you wait a second, you finish your, it should kill. If not, just hit. That boss is a pain in the ass because of the instruments, and just how trolly they can be. But on beginner, they should never kill you. They just slow you down a lot. And there's not a lot you can do about it. So, head over to Dwarf Woodlands, have a cutscene, dash forward, and long loading screen. So, in this room, we're going to be going up to that platform before we go anywhere else. There are three main methods of getting there. I'm going to attempt to show you all of them. The fastest one, I don't understand. I'm not good at it. Don't worry about it. But the fastest one is you jump, hold R1, hold slide to the left, max X, and supposedly it can get you there. I get it once in every, like, 40 attempts. It doesn't work for me. So, I would say, starting out, don't worry about it. You can maybe mess with it later. The movement that I do is at the start, hold R1, target to the you target to the left once if it will load properly. The worst part about this strat is sometimes you just have trouble locking on to the guy on the left. But you want the guy on the left once, guy on the right twice. I screwed up, did them both twice, that should still work. But you want the left once and the right twice. And then you're going to go over here. Go over here to the vision fire. Or er, flame salvo, my bad. Didn't pick it up. So, say. I'm going to go back here because. Say neither of those way of movement are working for you. Here's the, here's the safe and easy way to do it. You go over to this guy up here, jump up, turn around, sliding dash. Then when you jump, these guys will spawn, shot lock on them two or three times, and you're up. And then you get the chest, you come over here, lock onto that thing. What I'm doing with the camera here is I'm moving the right analog stick to where I am facing the platform I just came from. That way, when I'm when I get over here, I can always hold to the back and to the right and just get where I'm going. And then you go up here. So this room, we're going to head towards this big hedge and jump. If you line, up, line it up in a way where you're lining up with that hedge and facing the wall, you should consistently grab the ledge. Then go over here, jump, sliding dash, and pick up the fission fire chest. Now we're going to head over to this Moogle. Going to sell Quick Blitz first thing on the menu. Press R2 twice to go to Magic. Sell the Fission Fire we just picked up, sell Blizzard. Press the touchpad on PS4 in order to cha change the menu to buy. Then scroll a couple down to fire, buy six of them. R1, up one, arrow, buy it. Then up two more, zero gravity, buy it. Press start to close the menu. Then go up here, demand deck, melt commands. That will pop up, it's fine. 
Go down, Stun Edge, Zero Gravity, Pulsing Crystal, you'll get Binding Strike and the com and the combo finisher boost. This is the main thing the Pulsing is used for. You will also get a finish boost later. The finish boost the combo of finisher boost is more helpful than the finish boost, so if you only get one pulsing in a run, you want to use it in this meld. Then go over here, edit deck, put the binding strike in, we're going to put in three fires, and then we're going to head to this fight. So this force fight, remember back when I said if you didn't get an Aqua D-Link drop, a strat or two would change? This is the main one. If you didn't get the Aqua D-Link drop, you're going to go into Aqua immediately in this fight and just start hitting floods and pray you get it. It sucks, it's annoying, but what can you do? If you have it, you use it, go down three, magnet, thunder, revert, hit a few guys, and that's going to be the strat for the rest of this fight. The this is our most used combo. I'm, I'm actually reverting right here instead of using the finisher. This is very important. You'll notice that when you use the D-Link, the D-Link gauge goes down, and those little blue orbs refill it. I knew when those red guys died, they would drop D-Link orbs, but when these green, green scrappers die, they would not. And since I knew that when the, re that when the red guys died, I wanted to have D-Link, I chose to revert and kill these guys the slow way to make sure I have D-Link for the last wave. This is a subtle but very important thing to try to go fast in this game, is just to know when you, when you have to use your D-Link and when you don't. Then for this final wave, you go in between these three big bodies, Magnet, Thunder, Finish. You'll see in the top top of the screen, if you look, there is a level up, D-Link level up for me. If a D-Link level up is on screen, you will automatically pick it up when a fight ends. Hence why Aqua is at level 2. If you see a D-Link level for Aqua at any point during that fight, then you should go out of your way to pick it up. But do not use the finisher if Aqua is level 2 at any point during that fight. The finisher is long, the finisher is slow, the finisher doesn't do as much damage. So, but you do want to pick it up. Your combos will change to Magnet, Thunder, Mind Square. If you have it at level 2. In any case, we're going to head back to where we came. Towards the mirror. I do a cute little sliding dash here, because why not? And we're just going to go back the way we came. Using pretty much the same thing. We use Flame Salvo movement to get across here, since we got... Or not Shadow Rave, not Flame Salvo. Since we got Flame Salvo before uh, we get, got to Mirror, we can just do that, not worry about the chest. And now we're at Magic Mirror. Magic Mirror is a dickhead. But here's what you want to do. At the start, jump, lock on, sliding dash. And then I'm going to hit him two times in Binding Strike. The Binding Strike will hit, will lower you to the ground and hit. Then I'm going to hit him one, two, three. That'll get me into critical impact. I hit him once, he will fly away, charge at him, and just start whacking him. Then he's going to do one of two things. He will either fly away, which you want, or go into the ground. If he goes into the ground, he will either have a long hallway attack where he's hidden, he's hidden among a ton of faces. In that case, you just look for the smiling one and you hit it till he dies. Or he'll just do a big circle around you. Again, you just wait for the attacks, you hit the smiling one until he dies. 
If he doesn't fly away from you, it loses a decent chunk of time. There's nothing you can do about it, it's RNG. If he does fly away from you, wait for him to show up, shot lock him, and then he's dead. It's possible to kill him before he gets the chance to fly away or go underground, but it's completely random. Oof! And now we're going to go to Mysterious Tower and have one of the longest menus in the game. So head on over here. Skip the cutscene, dash to the right, there's a cure chest over here, you want it, dash back to the left, pause. So the order of this is kinda specific. When Aqu when Aqua is at level 2, you're going to go down to D-Link, select Aqua, hit L1, and then go back. That will make Aqua have her level 1 finisher for the rest of the game, which is good. It's fast, it does a lot of damage, we want that. If Aqua's not at level 2 yet, just don't do that. You will do that menu later, during some other menu in Radiant Garden, hopefully. In any case, go up to Items, Equipped, equip Treasure Trove, it's the second one down. Then back, then back up to Commands, and we're going to edit a bunch of stuff. This sliding dash, I'm hitting R1, go down, zero gravity. Then these fires, I'm replacing them all with level 1 fires. You notice all those fires for level 2? I'm replacing them with level 1. Then R R2 to get over to action. Go down 1, air slide. Then R2 again, replace flame sal the flame salvo with the shadow rave, and you're done. It's a long menu, it's easy to forget some parts of it. Don't worry too much about it. If you forget any major part of it, you have time between now and when we actually get to Radiant Garden. Small thing about the movement in space here, it's quicker to not be on those lines because you can just take more direct paths that way. Get all the cutscenes, wait for the revolving heart to go away before you skip them. And head over to the force fight in Radiant Garden. Skip a cutscene and we're right back into the action. Immediately I'm going to go into Aqua's D-Link, that's one, one step up, down three. Down 3, Magnet, the Thunder is now down 4 from after you use the Magnet, so keep that in mind. Going to Magnet, Revert, start killing things, because I want the Dealing Orbs. And these, the wave of blue guys after this will not drop those Dealing Orbs, the Floods will. Four of these guys will spawn, you're going to do a Flame Salvo, that's not quite full. Hopefully it does some decent damage and you're just kind of mopping them up from there. Then this wave will spawn with the hourglasses and big guys. Go in the middle, Aqua, Magnet, Thunder, Finisher. Which will cause four of these red guys to spawn. You need to kill two of them. And then the last wave will spawn. Go in the middle, Magnet. Do it as soon as you can. Wait for the big guy to come in, and then finish. Hopefully they all die. So, I mentioned command- Mentioned random drops a couple of times earlier in the run. This is when they become relevant. Because you're going to go to this chest and grab it. It's a Shimmering Crystal. You're going to want to remember that name, because shimmer Shimmering Crystals are very important to combine with our fires that we're getting, because we want three fire boosts by the end of the game. The Shimmerings with the fires create the fire boost. 
If we have three fire boosts, then we can do the maximum amount of damage to the final boss. If we have two fire boosts, your damage is the same except for Peter Pan and the final boss as three fire boosts. If you have one fire boost, then things get a tiny bit sketchy. In any case, this menu, you melt commands. If you press triangle like this, it will take away all the commands that you cannot meld and just narrow it down to the ones you can. So I'm going to select sliding dash, R1, down to zero gravity, pulsing, this is the finish boost I mentioned earlier. And now all of these fires, you're going to meld as many of them as you can with shimmering crystals. I have been unlucky and do not have a shimmering drop. But if you're luckier than me, and you have three shimmering drops, you meld all of these into Fyra's with fire boost. And then you have all of them in this menu. This menu in particular changes quite a bit. No matter what, your first two commands will be Confusion Strike and Binding Strike. After that, it depends on your shimmering luck. Because I only have one fire, mine is going to be one fire uh, Thunder and Cure, or Cure and Arrow, it doesn't matter. However, if you are lucky, you can have... Si this can be Fire of Fire of Thunder, or it can be Fire of Fire of Fire, or it can be Fire of Fire of Cure, or whatever you want it to be. It, that's all RNG based. So, before we do anything, we're going to kill one of these Floods, because our D-Link is not white where it needs to be, jump off of here, slide and dash over, do this thing. When you use the D-Link in midair, it will pull you to the ground like so. I was not quite over the edge there. But just go over here, do our key combo I've been talking about for a while, collect the items, and go do it again. You'll notice that I'm pressing sideways before I use the finisher, so I'm already hovering over revert. This allows me to revert a little bit faster, which in turn allows me allows me to uh, get all of the D-Link drops before I run out of D-Link. So we just go straight over here to this guy, go back here, hit magnet, hit thunder, finish. It's a bit different here. Then we scroll to this guy, Mind Square, Thunder, and Mind Square, Magnet, Finisher, Revert. We go to these guys, build up a shot lock that is not max. I fucked up. You will see why you do not want to max the shot lock here. Say everything's dead, I have to wait for the animation to be over. That's why you don't want to do what I did. In any case, hopefully you have full D-Link again, and you come over here. Trinity Armor is a pain, and how bad the fight is depends entirely on your setup. It depends on if you have finish boost, if you have the air, co the air combo finisher boost, and it depends on how many fire boosts you have. As long as you have finish, finish boost and one fire boost, it should be okay. If you have more than that, it can be super speedy. In any case, I'm going to show you the basic formula for how to do this fight regardless. So I'm going, going to dash forward, lock on, do a full air combo. One hit, fire. That will get me into Firestorm and now start hitting him. Just start hitting him until you get the Firestorm finisher, then I'm going to wait for him to do his third attack. He always attacks like that three times, and then I use the Firestorm after it, so he can't avoid it. Also make sure you try to line up sort of like this on the side of him, so that fire can hit his arms as well as his legs, that's important. Now same combo again, one, two, three, one fire. Sometimes you have to do an extra hit, that's fine. So when he's going to charge up this deadly looking laser here, it is deadly, but it's be but since you're on beginner, you don't really have to worry about it. Just keep going. 
it won't do that much damage to you. Just get Firestorm again. Kill him. If this guy's still alive, kill it. Make sure you kill that propeller before you start attacking the head. That is very important. Now, this guy is going to do this. He is invulnerable when he does this, this attack. But he's going to come over, do this silly laser thing, and you do the same combo we've been doing. To get into Firestorm, and you're going to start wailing on him. Your health will probably get low while you do this. If you have, if you wanted to be decked and have cure in your, want to be safe and have cure in your deck, that's fine. When the, when he he is done doing that, charge up a full shot lock on him. If you have the right setup and a little bit of luck, he will die. I had need, so I'm going to charge it up again. But he should die after... wow, that's that's unlucky. Remember when I said he's immune during that attack? Yeah. That's rather unlucky. In any case, you can use a fire finisher when he does this, and it, he takes damage. Ideally, you want to be able to do a fire finisher while he's doing the laser thing. But yeah, that that's example of how a fight can go wrong. And that's why you want more than one fire boost going into that fight. So... No, we don't want to show that. So just come over here. Slide along. Hope If your D-Link is not full, kill one of those two floods and then come over here. If your health isn't full, just tap the save point because the beeping's irritating. Now, over here, we want to sell I any items that are extra. We don't need a lot of extra money, but essentially, don't sell these, don't sell any fires, don't sell thunder, cure, or arrow. Anything else is extra. So I have a balloon letter and a potion. Now, R1 and up is a binding square. Get one. R1 again is magnets. Get three. Scroll over here. If this Binding Strike is at level 3, replace it with the Binding Strike you just bought. If it's not, then you, you will put the Binding Strike there later. Now go over here, R1. Replace the Magnets, and now we're going into grinding. So, if you are just learning this category, this is the segment I would recommend you spend the most amount of time practicing. Because there is a lot of stuff going on in this second. But I'm going to show you the basic combos. And I'm going to show you show you the menus. And hopefully we can go from there. So go right in the middle of the square. Aqua D-Link. Magnet. Thunder. Finisher. Revert. Hopefully they all die. Sometimes one stays alive. When you kill them all, another... These guys will spawn. Immediately go back into Aqua and cast Mind Square. See, this is why you need to practice it. I screwed it up here. You need to be very quick on the Mind Square in order for them to hopefully get hit. Otherwise, this happens, and this isn't very fun. In any case, just Magnet, wait for the birds to hopefully get caught, hit one if you don't have the finisher, and murder everything. Do not, I repeat, do not use thunder during that. You want the magnet to catch everything, that will get you most of the way there. If you do the mind square correctly, which I didn't, you should get the finisher. The reason you don't use thunder is you want to use it here, when you head over this way. And then jump to collect all of that. You should have enough D-Link to go again. I unfortunately do not, which is actually really damn surprising. If you don't, go to the save point and warp out and back in. That's the fastest way to get D-Link if you don't. Unfortunate, but it allows me to show you what happens. So after that first room, 
your magnets will be at level 2. Now you replace these magnets with whatever still needs to be leveled up. Because I was unlucky, and I had to put my Cure and Thunder in my deck when, when I fought Trinity Armor, the only thing I still have to level is Arrow, Viking Strike, and Confusion Strike. If you have three Fire Boosts, you're going to be replacing this with Arrow, Thunder, Cure. All three of them will need to be leveled up. If you your Binding Strike was not fully leveled before you started this grinding, this is when you replace it with the level 1 Binding Strike. So you do that, you go back, we're going to head back to the middle, we're going to do this again. Hopefully better this time. Magnet, Thunder, Finisher, Revert. Wait, Aqua again, Mind Square. Wait a second, Magnet, wait for the birds to come in, and then finish. Then scroll, go over here, Magnet, Thunder, Finisher, Revert, gather everything, get back in there. And you're going to do this four times total. We have done it twice, we're doing it two times more. Say it with me, Magnet, Thunder, Finisher, Revert. Oh, one of them lived, lol. Then Mind Square, wait for one of them to hit it. Gather. Wait for the birds to come in. Hopefully they all will. And kill. The reason you want to wait for the birds is because they are capable of dropping shimmering crystals, which you want. And also, they can sometimes fly over and actually pick up your orbs and stuff, which you do not want. While we're doing this, you are looking out for item drops, like Fleetings. I've got a couple of those, that's good. If you don't have your three fire boosts, you're also looking out for Shimmerings. I have gotten incredibly unlucky this run. And, but in any case, this is the last time in the room, and I'll show you what to do from there. <laughs> so, grinding's done. Now, now we're going to start melding some of these commands. Like these fires, any fires you still have, you melt them. I got really unlucky, it looks like we're going to only have one fire boost. That is the worst possible RNG. You're going to see me do negligible damage on a lot of fights later on, which is really unfortunate. And then we are then we meld the magnets together, don't use anything. Meld the thunder and the magnet together, don't use anything. Meld the cure and arrow together, use a fleeting, that will give you an attack haste. Then go over here, equip your magnets that hopefully have a random ability. Equip your Fyras that hopefully have Fire Boost. Go back in this room, we're doing it one more time. Once you get to this point in the run, the main item you're looking for are Fleets. That's really the only thing you're going to be using later on in this run. That's unfortunate, but whatever, let him go. Now we're going to start heading to Bragg. Go to this first wave, do the coveted combo we've talked so much about. Go to this wave, Mind Square, Magnet. Hopefully they die. Go over here, hit the hourglass, and go fight. Go fight Bragg. So Bragg is completely RNG in terms of how good or bad the fight is. It is possible to kill him in one cycle, but that is unfortunately completely random. <laughs> So, in any case, 
Brag is going to start up, start out to going to the top and firing down on you. There are two ways to deflect this. The first is block. You basically do block almost as soon as you see a projectile. The hitbox is really very forgiving on it. The slightly faster way is to attack. The hitbox is also forgiving on that. It is slightly faster. However, the timing is a bit, little bit more exact than the block. And if, but on beginner, you get hit. It's not a big deal. You just waste time because you need to reflect two before he'll come down. When he comes down, he'll jump once, let him jump, then pull Flame Salvo. If you're lucky, you can do two Flame Salvos on him while he's down here, and he'll just die. But that's completely RNG. He's going to go back up here, we're going to play his little game again. He's going to jump once, we'll let him do it, fully flame salvo him, hopefully he dies. If you run out of focus and he's not dead, you just have to man it. You just have to man up on him. Just attack him, fire him, hope he dies. It's pretty much random how much of the fire actually hits him. So, yeah, it's a pretty annoying fight, everything considered. The important thing is do not attempt the flame, flame salvo him until he does the first jump when he hits the ground. Or else you could run into run into issue where you start flame lock. You start doing the shot lock, he jumps, you don't know where he is, and you lose a bunch of time trying to find him again. So, of these three worlds, we're going to Disney Town first. Skip a couple cutscenes, we have no menu to do, just talk to Chip and Dale and play the best mini game ever. Press O, because this help screen has more than one thing. Press X to skip that little cutscene. Press and hold X here, let go of it, press it when it says go, similar to Mario Kart, you get a boost. And now we're doing this <laughs> Always take the shortcut. It's actually kinda easy to screw this up if you don't know what you're doing. Basically, just stick by the wall, wait for the tornadoes to go by, and you'll be fine. The easiest... The one technique you have is if you press square like this, and then move your analog stick, you kinda just jump in a different direction. It's very helpful when things aren't going very well for you. Like, I'm not going to be able to make that, so I fly over here, the square changes direction. He's never hit me when I do that before, but hey, that's for I sleep for you. We got the best voice line RNG, so at least we have that going for us. All of the ducks, if they catch up to you, repeat. One of three voice lines. Later alligator is the best. Again, I don't. I'm not comfortable with the side of the rock there. If you are comfortable with it, and I recommend practicing trying to do it, then go for it. But if you're like me and you're not comfortable in that situation, just go straight. Go straight. Hold square. Change direction. Let go, and then. You're it's really, really simple. Just uh, change direction while you're holding square, you immediately jump that way. It's really helpful. I lost this all the time until I started doing that break. Until I started doing that break strats. So this is very important if you don't get sub 2 reset. Nah, I'm just playing with you. <laughs> If you, if you don't get sub 2, then whatever. You played it safe, that's fine. It's not a big deal. One note about the cutscene there. You saw I only had one cutscene to skip after Rumbling Racing. That is because I set up a profile where uh, the character I am currently playing 
Rip. I have one completed file on this game of a character that is not the one I am playing. In this case, I think I have a Ven completed the profile. If you do not have that set up, there will be t two or three more cutscenes after that one for you to skip. It loses like five seconds, it's not a big deal. If you start taking this seriously, then hey, just set up the other save, you'll save five seconds. If not, then who really cares? So after Disney Town, OC. There are two ways to do this force fight. You can either use magnets and fires and get into Firestorm and start attacking things that way. For some people that works. I prefer Aqua Strats, where I just slide over, Aqua, I do I do the coveted combo that we've been doing for quite a while now. And this is my preferred method of doing it, because for me it's easier. If you play around with it, and you prefer the strat where you uh, you just use your Magneras and your Fyras, then, then that is great, whatever works for you. you. Either way, there will usually be one Flood still alive, and just kill it. It's not a big deal. Now, 10 rounds, There's a, these are surprisingly specific for a little bit. Rounds w 1, 2, and 4, we're going to shot lock. Not full shot lock. If you full shot lock, you lose time. I'm going to show you that right now. This is me full shot lock. Because I only have one fire boost, I kinda needed to. This is why Helmy having one fire boost is just the worst. What you want is like 12, 13, 14. And if I had any more fire boost, that would have killed Vine. If you have any more fire boosts, if you have any more fire boosts, then doing max is going to lose you like five seconds. Round three, walk forward, magnet, one hit, fire. Then jump, hit, hit, hit. Round 4, again, shot lock. Let's go. As for when to time the ending of your shot lock, that's just something you get used to. So now for a while, we're just going to be doing attacks. Hopefully, you do not have... Hopefully, for round 5, you did not get, get or use the Firestorm finisher. Because you want to go into the middle of this guy, Magnet, and then use the Firestorm fin Finisher here instead. If you have to use the Firestorm Finisher, then go for it. It's not a big deal. Either way, here, Mag, one hit, one hit, fire. Get back in, get back in your, uh, demands. Having one fire boost really, really sucks. I'm missing out on a lot of damage. This is another round where hopefully you didn't have to use Firestorm, the Firestorm finisher. I got the Firestorm finisher early and I purposely chose to not use it because the wave was already dead. That way this round I can go into the middle, they can not do that, and I can kill them. So here's a point, you'll notice that my commands were hovering over Fyra going into this round. That means they will be hovering over Fyra right now when I unpause this. But for, for the Jellyfish, you want to be spamming Magnera. Like, the start of this, you want to be mashing that out. So ideally, you will be hovering over Magnera before you use the Firestorm finisher. If you're not, Magnera is in the one slot, which means it was automatically shortcut for you. So if you hit left on the D-pad, you will be taken to it immediately and just mash it out like that. 
use what mash out one magnet to light to the middle, mash out another one, hopefully it kills, kill off the rest. Before you talk to Hades again, we're going to meld our confusion strikes and stuff with fires. You will attach as many fleetings as you can. I had zero fire zero fire boosts, but I got a decent amount of fleetings, so we're going to have some attack haste. Now we have the two Magneras, three Fire Surges, and the Cure. A note, when I said there are alternative strats for some of this stuff, if you have two or three Fire Boosts, there is an alternative strat to this fight. This fight coming up, where instead of Cura, you have an Aether. And for, Z and for the second phase of Zack, you use the Aether, and then you do the same thing I'm going to do for the first phase. I am not comfortable doing that. It doesn't help me at all. I find it slow, personally, but if it works for you, then do it. In any case, on to Zack. So, at the very start here, press and hold R1, we're going to shot lock him. Max it out and mash out those X's. Mash them out, you want to be getting in the 40s. And do it again. You're doing it twice. Now, if you have two or three fire boost and you mash them out in the 40s, then two, f then one fire surge should finish them off here. Because I only have one fire boost, I'm going to have to do a lot more than just one fire surge to actually kill them. You can see how much not having the fire boost really hurts me. Hopefully these things will be dying a lot quicker for you than they are for me. In any case, phase two, phase two, Zack two, hold R1 again, do the same thing. If you went with the ether strats, that means you're going to pop an ether either before he does that or right now and shot lock him again. I don't do that. Instead, I enter Ventus' D-Link, and I start hitting him about a bit. When you use the finisher, he can retaliate, or you can hit him and prevent him from doing so. The timing's wonky. I don't get it. If you have two or three fire boosts, he dies on the second finisher. If not, then whatever. And that's Zack. Only two more worlds to go, technically speaking. Before we head into deep space, go into items and equip Mark of, Mark of the Hero. This is the fight I take my drink of water, just mash X, go in circles, try to stay in the middle, nothing to it. All there is to it. Two more cutscenes, and we're getting into the Force fight. So, the Force fights in Deep Space and Neverland, where you have your fire surges, are really, really wonky. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But basically, go into the middle, Magnet, you saw how I ran away before I jumped and Fire Surged? That's because Fire Surge propels you forward at a set speed, or a set distance rather. So when I'm running away, what I'm doing is trying to make sure Fire Surge hits each enemy as much as possible. 
you'll be seeing me do that a lot for all of these force fights. Go here, get get this, run away, fire, fire surge, try to hit as many as I can. This is the most annoying wave, because you have two guys showing up on opposite sides. Just try to clop them together like that, and then when you ha have these big guys show up, use the finisher. Hopefully the magnet lasts long enough that this doesn't happen, but it's it can. What are you going to do? So coming up is the only really technical movement thing in this run. As we head to the right, press triangle while going through here, it's slightly faster. So th this is fairly precise movement that's kind of hard to describe. What I'm going over here is I'm going right here, right about here, and casting Cinderella's D-Link. Then I'm going to select Enchanted Step, jump, lock on, hit triangle. When you hit triangle, when you cast Enchanted Step in the air while locked on to this guy, you will be blasted up, hang on to this ledge, and then head over here. Now I'll show that in full speed. Head, head over here, lock on... That's actually the main problem with it, to be honest. <laughs> this is the main reason this movement is weird, is because if you screw it up the first time, as you got to see there, if you don't get that movement the first time, then you can suddenly not lock on to that gun turn. It's really, really finicky like that. I don't know why, I don't know how to explain it. So here we fall off, head over here, sliding dash. I don't know why I'm calling it sliding dash. In any case, we're going to go fight experiment now. So experiment has a lot of RNG. The strat is literally shot locking. Shot lock him until he's dead, that's the strat. But... The RNG is you see those guns over there? Whenever he wants to, he can choose to hide himself in one of those guns, and then just shoot at you. If you're lucky, he will choose not to. You can just shot lock him until he's dead. That's called guns. And he's giving me a chance at it here. Even though I only had one fire boost, he's... He let me almost show it off. So, gunless, he dies right there instead of going into the guns. Instead, we get to show off this crap. These guns, they shoot at you like this, they're annoying. Just lock on, jump, fire surge them. Do not use your shot lock. Just fire surge them. And then, either shot lock that guy if he has a lot of health, or fire surge him if he doesn't. And that's the fight. Uh, something I maybe should have mentioned earlier, switch target in this game is L1. Just tap L1 and switch the target. So off to Neverland, um, the strat in this force fight is very similar to the strat in the other one. So, ma go here, magnet, run away, fire search, get your magnet back, cast it again, run away, fire search, they're not dead, fire search. That's unfortunate, just fire search it. Now this wave is important, you want to magnet, then lock on to the 8th, which is easier said than done at times. And you ideally want to do that while the floods are in the magnet. When they die, these two birds will spawn. 
Magnet, Prey, they both get cut, and then Fire Surge away. Once you have the finisher, use it on one of the apes. If you're lucky, you can use it on two, but you can't count on that. Then use three fire surges, will kill an ape. When there's one left, start using your magnets, because you still have these annoying green things to kill. And the magnet will be doing some damage to them. But again, three fire surges kills those guys, the magnets do a little bit of damage there. If you can use one of the fire one of the fire surges on the green guys and use the finisher on one of the apes, that works a little bit better. But anyway, we're just going to go over here, talk to this Moogle. We're going to sell I'm sorry, I'm blank. My mind is blanking. We're going to sell these magnets. We don't need them anymore. Then up here, R1, up two. Fire surges, buy three of them. R2 over three times. Go to these mega ethers. If you hit, if you get to the right on either the analog stick or the D-pad, you will buy. Get as, it will let you buy as many as your money allows. Do that for mega ethers. You want as much of them as possible. Ideally, you at least have six of them. Afterwards, equip the fire surges. When I press square on this Kira, it allows me to press on the left D-pad and have that select the Kira. Then R1 Sonic Impact over here. I personally do not equip the Sonic Impact. I am one of two like runners I know of who consistently doesn't, but it makes this movement a little bit easier. And it also means you can go up to this rock and just do that. If you choose not to equip it, you just go right next to the rock, fire surge, it will target the enemy next to you, it will hopefully kill the rock. In any case, before we go fight Peter, we're going to do a tiny bit more grinding here. And what we're going what we're looking for is we want to be level 18 with between 330 and 320 experience to level 19. That way, when we're done with these next couple fights, we should be level 20 heading into final fights. So we're going after these totem pole guys, and we're going after the ape guys to try to level up. You see me, I have 63, 63 experience left. If you have a low number like that, that means you're that much to level 17, which means... I'm sorry, that means you're that much to level 18, which means you have a little ways to go, you're a tiny bit under level. My route? This tends to be the case, and you tend to have to kill everything in this room. There are uh, other people, like you'll constantly be like, you'll be at 500 left till next level. At, unless you really screwed up, that means 500 to level 18, and you just have to kill a couple things. In any case, we're going to clear out the room so that we can level up. You see, I hit level 18. If you don't have enough XP, like I don't there, just leave, come back, and kill something. For me, the quickest thing to kill is this 8, because it's just 3 fire surges. That's a personal opinion, though. When you have the slot, when you have the extra sliding impact thing, you can just use it, get over. I do not use it for a couple reasons, but I'll go into that after we fight Pam. Pam.
Japan is really simple. Shot lock, and do it until he's dead. <laughs> if you have three fire boost, he will die after two shot, two full shot locks. If you have two fire boost, it will take three full shot locks. If you only have one fire boost, well, we're going to find out. I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's three. This is one of two fights that having three fire boosts versus two fire boosts actually affects. The other fight is Final Terranor, but we'll get there when we get there. So, leave leave the room, skip a cutscene, come back, skip another cutscene, there's jellyfish everywhere. This fight's a lot of fun. Go to the middle, aqua, magnet, revert, watch things explode, repeat. That's the whole strat. Make sure you revert so that, you, so that magnet is not on cooldown. And you can just spam it, it's a lot of fun. If I didn't mention- and you see I reached level 20 at the end of that fight. That is what you should see. If you're not level 20 going into final fights, you're going to lose some decent time on final Terranor. So if I didn't mention, uh, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought, that's unfortunate. In any case, we're going to skip cutscenes, head to Badlands, skip another cutscenes, now head back to the land of the departure, we're going to fight up Ericus. Ericus, in my opinion, is the scariest fight in this game on beginner. The reason for that is because the entire strat is to just wail at him. We're going to lock on, hit him a couple times just to stagger him. Now we're fire surging him till he's dead. That's the strat. Now, depending on how many attack boosts you have, depends on if you can do this without having a finisher in between. I have four attack boot haste, so like I can do this forever. If you only have one, then uh, you're going to have to interject a dark impulse finisher between them. So you'll notice there, the way this fight works is whenever you hit Ericus, he has a chance to retaliate. There is nothing you can do about that retaliation. It is going to hit you. What I decided to do is when my health was getting close to that first spike on Terra's hair, I ran away and he... That is the cautious way to go about this fight. It is very easy to die if you are not on top of when you want to heal. And this is also why I shortcut cure when I do, because it makes th this fight a little less terrifying. Because I'm not running away scrambling to find where cure is. I just press left on the d-pad and it's there. In any case, because I have all the attack haste, I can just fire surge him like a madman and he'll die eventually. If that's what the Stark Impulse finisher looks like, if you have to use it. If you use it, you'll go back to normal form, then you'll fire surge him, he'll put you back in Dark Impulse, and you can do it again. Skip a couple cutscenes, master a couple things, and final fights, here we come. Okay, last menu of the game. You ready? Really simple menu. Go to commands, mash through some level 3 nonsense. Go to the bottom, R1 a couple times, equip the Mega Ethers, put them on your shortcut. 
then item equip chaos river technically i did that wrong you're supposed to put on the chaos river first it saves a few saves like two seconds or whatever because it's one less menu to back out of but either way do both those things you'll notice i'm trying really hard not to use my extra dash here that's because of these tornadoes and the way they work. I don't equip the extra dash because it's very easy to accidentally do it in one of these tornadoes and screw this up. But the movement's actually pretty straightforward. You dive along, hug this corner, now I'm going to dive right next to that tornado. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm right next to it. I go to this one, I dive right next to this, I dive right next to this, and I'm the way those tornadoes AI works is because I'm dive when I dive next to one, it starts chasing after me, and when I dive next to the other, that starts chasing after me. What that ultimately means is that none of the tornadoes can actually- I only have one tornado chasing after me at a time, which means none of them have the ability to catch me. And it's pretty straightforward, you might have to practice it one or two times, but it's not that bad. So, final fights. This is Venetus, he is a dickhead. Slide forward, lock on, shot lock. You slide forward because, in my experience, that gives you better RNG with this crap. He will always DM like this, how long it lasts is RNG. If he doesn't do end it right away, just slide over him while he's doing it. And then you just shot lock him again and pray he doesn't do that forever, just avoid attacks. That was pretty good luck. Okay. Xehanort's only like a 20 second fight if you know what you're doing. So at the start, I'm going to slide forward before I do anything, because if I don't, sometimes he'll, go, he'll like, blink backwards. And if you don't slide forward to mash him, then he'll just hit you and it's waste time and it's not good. So I'm going to slide forward and start fire surging. Like, see, that's what I mean, he'll just blink. So, slide forward, just fire surge him. He did this attack, I don't really care. Fire surge him a few more times. In the middle of the set in the middle of when you have Firestorm, you're going to do a few physical hits. I'm going to do one, two, fire surge. Because I did two uh, physical hits, it is going to put me into the charge blade finisher. And just mash X and watch his health bar explode. Oh, he usually dies. That's weird. <laughs> That's weird. Not sure what happened there. Probably the one fire boost meant that the fire surges didn't quite do enough damage beforehand. In any case, that should kill. And it's be sure to do those two physical hits, or else you will not get the charge blade, and he has the ability to run away, and that's not fun. So, final fight, Terranort. How do I even describe this fight? So, before I do anything, I'm going to left analog stick over to my Mega Ethers. A few notes before I do anything. If you die during this fight, that is a major thing to consider because it can happen. If you die during this fight, then the Mega Ethers, and you hit retry, the Mega Ethers do not respawn. The Mega Ethers will refill based on how many more you have left. That is why you buy as many of them as possible. I only had enough money for four in Neverland, which means if I die and I hit retry, I only have one Mega Ether. And I'm kinda screwed. <laughs> So, but, so that is what that was about, that is important. Now, at the very start, we're going to shot lock. 
And this is basically the strat. We're going to run away from him, walking onto him and shot lock him as much as we possibly can. If you have two to three fire boosts, then you're going to be doing decent damage. I only have one, so I don't know how this is going to go. <laughs> In any case, just fire boost him. Hopefully most of it hits. When you're out of focus, run away. Pop a Mega Ether. Do it again. You don't really care what he's doing, to be honest. Just keep doing it. The one attack you care you care about two things. Does he cure? And does he DM? Uh, he's DMing right here. So I I use the shot lock. Ideally, you only want to use shot lock when it's at full. I did not, but that's honestly okay. So when he DMs, I'm going to show you how to avoid it the best you can. When he DMs, like, you're seeing a bunch of meteors come around. I'm going to pick a corner of the arena, get into it. Then I'm going to wait and block. This is the best way to avoid as much damage as possible. And then when the DM is over, right back to shot lock. If you have focus, you can pick a corner and attempt to shot lock through the DM, and you will not take damage. But those are really the two ways to try to avoid it. Like this time, I'm going to shot lock through the DM. And even though I shot locked pretty early, I should be okay. Up, I lied. But I shot locked early enough, I can cure. I can block, and I'm mostly fine. If he shot locks you like that, usually you can get your own shot lock off. I got bad luck there. Unless you get really bad luck, or... Unless you get really bad luck, or only have one fire boost, or both, you should be able to kill him with the flame salvo. And then, when he dies, it's time on the last hit. And that's Terranort. The only other thing you really need to know is that if the Flame Salvo doesn't kill him, then you have to man fight him with fire surges. Just whenever he uses his R's attacks, which are the big overarching keyblade slashes and whatnot, just flame just surge him through it. That's all you can do. There's kind of a specific timing you want to hit aim for, but honestly, if you if the fire if flame salvo doesn't kill, you should be really really close to it killing. Because this run, I only had one fire boost and I was fine. I also got lucky and he didn't cure that much. But yeah. That is Terra Beginner Benny Percent. I hope you found this guide helpful to you. One way or another. If you have any questions about any strats or anything like that, you can comment on this video, you can message me on Discord, you can message other really good runners on Discord. And uh, hopefully someone someone can help you. I think this is a really fun category to play. I think there's a lot of interesting things going on. The worst part about it is the RNG with the block, with the drops. That's something you have to accept going in if you're going to run this. But in any case, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you enjoyed. And hopefully I'll see your name on the leaderboard soon. Thank you guys. Take care. Aqua. Then. One day. I will set this right.